question is, what is the best way? And is there a right and wrong way? There is a right and wrong in this. Never be specific on something where there is limited quantities. And I'll give you an example. You can be specific about a Porsche Red Target convertible because, you know, I can, I can want the same thing and you can want the same thing and we can both get it, right? But if there's one house and it's right there and it's for sale and you want that house, well, 10 other people can want that house as well. There's only one. So the problem is if you want it, I want it too. So there's intention and then there's a counter intention. There's also a potential fear that you may not get it because there's other people involved, which will may reduce your ability to even get it. So the fact that focusing on something that you know is probable but not 100% means fear can creep in, and therefore it reduces your ability to get it. So what would be better in that respect is if you wanted that house, you can say, I want that house, or something as good or even better. So now you're opening up to the universe, and you have no fear with that, with that uh, request. You have no fear at all with that request, right? There's no, because now it's like, I just already said, I don't care if I get this or not. It doesn't matter. Because now you're, you're talking about an end result. And so the method in, in which you get there becomes not relevant. You feel better right now doing that way. But if you want a specific watch or a ring or something like that, that, that where, you know, you, you can get a Rolex and I can get a Rolex and everybody here can get a Rolex, no problem. So we can all want the same thing, right? But when it's something specific uh, where there's only one, then you want to be a little general or, or expand the way you, you put out the request for what you want. And this is an important concept because a lot of people want something if fear creeps in or doubt creeps in, it's going to shut off the ability to get it. So we're, setting, we're trying to set up things up so that, number one, that doubt doesn't creep in. So you get more of what you want. Secondly, you start opening up to the universe things that you don't even know exist. Now, sometime, I'll give you an example. I was with a guy, and I said, what do you want? I want a gold Rolex presidential. Why do you want it? Very important question. Why do you want it? Well, I've always wanted one. And the way I'm going to feel, I'm just going to feel like I'm a winner. I'm going to feel like I've achieved my dream. I'm going to feel like I've accomplished what I set out for. I'm going to feel like I set a goal and I actually got the goal. So I'm going to feel like a champion. I'm going to feel like a winner. I'm going to feel like uh, an achiever. I'm also going to feel really good walking around knowing that people are looking at me and looking at that watch and thinking, wow, that guy's got that watch. He must be something special. So I'm going to be able to put my shoulders back, and I'm going to feel really good. These are all honest reasons why you want the watch, right? Not a problem. I'm, just, I'm not judging you. I'm just, and they're all honest, legitimate reasons. I says, have you considered other watches? I says, what other watches are there? I says, well, you're going to be in Europe. I says, why don't you meet me over in Zurich? We'll have lunch and we'll go for a walk and I'll just show you some other things to consider. Well, we walked down what's called Benofstrasse, which is kind of their Fifth Avenue uh, or their Rodeo, Rodeo Drive of Zurich. And Switzerland is known, as you know, for watches. So they have watches that you've never seen before. You know, there's beautiful Patek Philippe's, there's Chopard. There's a lot of different watches that are handmade, and some of them are just magnificent and spectacular. So we walked up and down, and, and he got a little expanded. His, 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 his dreams became a little expanded. And here's the, the, the best part of it. He still wanted his Rolex watch, but that no longer was his dream. That was his next logical step. (laughs) Because he expanded his dream. Because the Rolex watch isn't very expensive compared to the other watches that were there. You with me? And then the idea is why have just one? 
you need to have more than one. So the point is now the dream starts expanding. So the answer to the question is when you want something, you can be very specific with what you want. And that's perfectly fine and perfectly good and encouraged. But don't be specific if it's the one house that's for sale because then you could have counter intentions involved and your likelihood of getting it goes down. So the solution to that is if you want something such as that house that's for sale, you could just basically say, I want that house or something as good or better. Let the universe come up with something that's even better for you and let it present itself. That reduces fear, reduces a uh, feeling of lack, and it'll allow you to bring in more of what you want. And always, if you, if, you, if you do something specific or general, add the feeling. And the feeling simply comes from asking yourself the question, why do you want it? Why do you want it? And the real question is, you know, how are you going to feel when you get it? Always make sure that feeling is involved. Because that's really ultimately what, you, what you're looking for is the feeling. Now, the last part of this is you can want just a feeling. Because at certain times, you may think, you know, there's no specific thing that I want. I can't say I want a specific car. It just, nothing is really, you know, light my fire. No, I really don't want a new house. I don't want to move. I'm happy with the house I got, you know. I mean, this is fine. It's not the biggest house in the world. It's not perfect, but God, the whole thought of moving, oh, that does not excite me <laughs> at all. I mean, I'm happy in this house. Okay, maybe I want to, uh, I'll, I'll, bring in a, I'll, I'll bring in a landscaper. Yeah, that'll be perfect. Okay. And I'll bring in a maid. Okay, but I ain't getting a new house. So you may not have things that you want, but the question is, how do you want to feel? And then you can, you can just focus on, I want to feel a certain way. And everyone's feeling can be different. Some people at certain times in your life say, I just want to feel stable. You know, my life has been running around, and I've had a lot of feeling of instability. So I just want to have a feeling of stability. Or you say, I just want to have a feeling of security. That's the feeling I want. I want to know that I'm financially secure, and my family is financially secure. And no matter what happens, I'm secure. I just want a feeling of security. And I don't know what's going to give it to me. So I'll say to the universe, give me whatever is going to be best to give me the feeling of security. Or you may say, you know something? I've lost passion in my life. I'm not excited anymore. So I want to feel passion. I want to I wanna be excited. I want when, when the alarm goes off in the morning, I want to jump out of bed with excitement and enthusiasm again. I want that to come back. So create something for me, because I don't know what it is, that makes me feel that way again. You with me? So you can put out that feeling. And this is really important. A lot of people don't understand that that is very key. That is perfectly wonderful and acceptable to put out a request for a feeling. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's not about the things. It's not about the monetary things, the, the material things. It's really about the experiences that you have. As you start getting older in life and start sitting down and reflecting on your life, it isn't going to be about the yacht that you bought. It isn't going to be about the car that you drove, the jewelry that you had, the custom clothing you had made. It's going to be about the experiences you had with other people. That's what you'll be talking about. You'll be talking about, remember. there's a beautiful phrase, remember when. Remember when we went fishing and remember we had John Denny go on that snipe hunt at midnight? Oh, my God. Was that we had him? We had we had a he had a miner's helmet on with a light. We gave him a poker, sent him out into the woods. Nobody would go in because there's bears in the woods. <laughs> remember, we thought he almost died. Oh, my God. I mean, you start talking about funny things like that. Remember, we got stuck when it was raining. Remember, we, we I mean, you remember we almost got killed by lightning. <laughs> you know? Me and Blaine, remember when we were driving down to Florida, we stopped in that motel and they had that vibrating bed, remember that? And, and, and we, were, we, were, we were sitting there in this one bed and we thought, you know, okay, well, you know, you want to try this vibrating bed? Sure. And we put that quarter in and it wouldn't shut off. Remember that? 
it was stuck. And we didn't know what to do, you know. We, should we call the manager? And are they going to think that we're two, you know, I don't know, guys? And we were so embarrassed. We, we, we wound up just leaving the motel and driving to another motel. Remember that? I mean, so you start talking about experiences, about the fun you had, about the laughter you had. Remember when we had the family over the house and we played badminton, remember? And we didn't have a badminton net, so we had to make that like a, an imaginary line and the arguments we had. It was over the net. There's no net. Yeah, it's right there. So you start, I mean, think about the things you talk about. It's about the feelings you've had, about the laughter. It's about the friendships. It's about the experiences. And, and this is why the club is very important because, we, again, we, we create an environment where that can happen, where you have the ability to, down the road, say to people, remember when. And it's not about the things. It's going to be about the experiences you have. So experiences relate to feelings. So when you want things, one thing always to consider is the feeling that's associated with it. Next question. I have a question about the picture up there and where you apply your focus. Um, there's different things that you brought up that bring us into focusing, carrying a car with you and, uh, and other things. And also the next logical step, does that have more to do with the how as opposed to the why? Great questions. Uh, the question is, where, where do you focus up here? Is the next logical step the how? The dreams can be put on your dream board. When you put dreams on a dream board, you don't focus on them. They're there, but you're not focusing on them. I'm standing here, against that wall is my dream board. My next logical step is, is what I'm looking at, but I want you to imagine that the next logical step is right here. It's on a piece of paper that's clear, so I can see right through it. And when I see through, I'm focusing on the next logical step, but I can see in the background the chief aim which is also on a clear piece of paper. It's clear, crystal clear, which means I can see right through it and I can see my, my dreams. So this is not focus, right? It's kind of in the background. The chief aim is also not the focus because I'm focusing on my next logical step. When I achieve my next logical step, I focus on the chief aim until it gets me what the next logical step is. Because that's what I want to achieve. And when I focus on chief aim, I can still see the dreams in the background. You with me? So where is the focus? If you have your dream board up and you look at your dream board once or twice a day, that's fine. Doesn't mean you're focusing on them. You're still thinking about them throughout the day. That's fine. But you're focusing on the next logical step. And the next level of focus would be the chief aim. The least level of focus would be the dream, but you're still thinking about it. So if your dream is to win a gold medal, that's fine, but you still got to do these 150 push-ups right now. <laughs> okay? So you're focusing on, I got to get through these push-ups, and then I got to do this sprint, and I have to hit this time. But why are, you, why are you doing that? Well, my dream is to win the gold. Okay, what do you focus on? I have to beat this time. What are you focused on? I have to beat this time. What's your dream? The goal. You with me? What's, what's, what's your chief aim? To get to the Olympics. What's the dream? The gold. So you, so you understand the progression? So same thing. So it's all there. It's all in your awareness. All these things. The next logical step, which is the how, what you're physically doing. The chief aim, that's the ultimately what you want. So chief aim is what you want. Next logical step is what you're doing. Or it could be the next level of, a, of achievement that's a very, in a very short, um, the next thing you can achieve, but in a very short window of time. So a next logical step, let's say you're in the sales business. I have to make 10 phone calls. 
So that's, my, that's, that's an achievement, but it's also an activity, right? I've got to get to 10 phone calls. That's my next logical step. Or if your chief aim is 10,000 a month, your next logical step is 500 a month. That's also something to achieve. So next logical step can either be an activity, the how, or it can just be a much lower um, objective that you need to reach. Okay? So if we look at this, if you notice the size of the circles, this is what you want, but they're really big, far away timeline. This is what you want, but it's also a timeline. And this is what you want or what you have to do. And it's in a very short unit of time, either a day or a week. Again, everyone's different. Some people can work on a month, but that, for most people, is pushing it. Your next logical step is either today or this week. That way you keep your objectives really clean and focused and you're, I have to achieve this today or I have to achieve this this week. Or I have to do this today or I have to do this this week. That's my next logical step. And if I do this, I'm getting closer to this. So let's say you're building an affiliate program and your uh, goal is to get to $10,000 a month in, in, in revenue from the affiliate program. And you have not a person sponsored yet. Okay, well, what's your next logical step? That's different for everybody. Maybe you say my next logical step is for me to start listening to the How to Get Started Fast program. Then my next logical step after that is how to, how to go platinum in 90 days and then go through the training. My next logical step is to uh, get some tools. My next logical step is to, you see, those are activities, right? You could also say for somebody else, my next logical step is to get one person in. Okay, but there's still things that have to be done in order to make that happen. The, the point here is you're, you're, you're focusing on what do you have to do today? What do you have to do today? That's, most people don't do that. What do you have to do today? They have the dream, they have the chief aim, and then they watch television all day. Like, well, you're not getting any closer to it. What do you have to do today to get you closer to your dream, to get you closer to your chief aim? What do you have to do? And if you think, I don't know, then your chief aim may be too big. And come up with the next logical step in terms of what do you want to achieve over the next week or two or three. Because one of those things is going to give you what do you have to do. There is activity required to get things to manifest in the universe. Question here. Thank you. Uh, my question is when you're focusing on something for 68 seconds and you know, maybe you do it every morning, should it be the same movie every day? So if I have a chief aim, that's gonna bring me multiple things. So maybe one morning I'm thinking about the social aspect of what that chief aim will bring me and the next you know, vision the next morning is, you know, me at the office and what that would look like. Should it be the same picture or can it be like multiple videos or multiple movies? When you're thinking about what you want, remember that once you ask one time, the order is in, the order has been play placed. For those who have a Christian or Jewish background, you may be familiar with the story where God said to Moses, touch the rock with your staff and water will spring forth. And Moses said, well, just to be sure, I'm going to hit it twice. <laughs> right? Okay, so we kind of, you know, and God said, I'm a little bit upset because I said all you have to do is hit it once. You didn't believe me. You hit it twice just to be sure. So, you know, you can't go into the promised land. All right. True or metaphor is irrelevant. The point is, when you put a thought out and ask, the order is given. If you come to a restaurant, I say, what would you like? I'd like a cheeseburger. Okay, fine. How do you like it? Medium rare. What type of cheese? Cheddar. Great. Lettuce, tomato, onion? Yes. Thank you. And I leave. The order is placed. The cheeseburger is coming. So there's no fear. There's no begging. There's no, I have, you know, 
you, there's no re-asking because the order's already been placed. Now, you really like cheeseburgers, and you love the medium rare at this particular restaurant with cheddar, mushrooms, onions, tomatoes. It, 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 I mean, you just don't like them. You love them, and you love this restaurant and the way they make them, and you know the chef who's cooking it exactly the way you want, and you place the order. So it's coming, and what are you thinking about? You're thinking about how delicious it's going to taste because you're starving as well. <laughs> so you're hungry, and you love it, and it's delicious, and you can't wait for it to come, and you get a smile on your face because it's coming. And so you're thinking about it, and you're thinking about how good it's going to taste, and you're thinking about how, how much you're going to enjoy it. And, and how, you know, you don't want to eat it too fast because then it'll be gone. But you don't want to eat it too slow because then it won't be, it will be kind of cold. So, you, you, know, you know, one bite, then put it down, and you're thinking, do I want to put ketchup on it and how much? And, you know, you're thinking about this, you know, I eat the French fries first, or do I mix them up, or what do I do here? Because you're, you're, you're loving this. So that's similar to asking something in the universe. So when you want something, you're putting out the request. Once you put out the request, don't put out the request again. You can certainly think about it, but think about it in a different way. Think about it in the light of how you're going to be enjoying it when it comes in because the order has been placed. See the difference? So you don't, don't keep asking every day. You've already asked. The order is placed. Okay? So certainly you can think about it. And every time you think about it, you can think about it in a different way in terms of how you're going to enjoy that which you already requested. The key here is not what the pictures are, but the feelings that you're going to be experiencing when you get it. And you're, you're picturing it in a manner of how much you're going to love it when it comes. You don't know when it's going to come, but it's going to come. G give you an example. If I say, okay... Um, I'm going to draw a name out of the hat, and one person in the room is going to win a brand-new Mercedes. Okay, I draw the name out. All right, Joe Smith, you just want a brand-new Mercedes. Jen's paying for it. Brand-new, no expense. We're going to give you the car. The only caveat is we don't know when you're going to get it. You don't know when you're going to get it. But I guarantee you it will be within one week and three years. <laughs> but here's a, here's a contract. Guaranteed it's yours. As a matter of fact, we actually own the car already, and we have the title, but you don't get delivery of it. We, you don't know when. It's going to be a magical guess for whatever. It's between now and three years. But here's the title. It's got your name on it. So, I mean, it's a real car. Here's the title. Okay? And here, there's the car right there. But we have a computer system that draws out... Uh, a date every day between now and three years and says, is today the day? And if it says no, then we do it next, next day. And at the end of three years, at the end of three years, if it always said no, then on the, the, the last day, then it's when you get it. But you get it sometime between now and then. Okay? The car is yours, right? I mean, it's yours. It's coming. You don't know when, but it's coming. You know it's coming within three years, but it's coming. You don't even think about it anymore. It's like, you know, why do I drive myself insane? Because I'm going to get it whenever I get it. Whenever it comes, whenever the computer pops my number, it's coming. But you're happy it's coming. You don't wonder if it's coming. You don't have to guess if it's coming. You don't have to, oh, please, please, I hope it comes, I hope it comes, I hope it comes. It's coming. It's coming. And when you put requests out into the universe, that is the feeling that you try to achieve, which is hard because sometimes you wonder, is it coming? <laughs> is it coming? But it is coming. So the idea is to have the feeling of it is coming. I don't know when. And to relax a little bit about it, about when it's coming. And to feel good now. The trick if there is one, and there's multiple tricks, there's a lot of nuances. The nuances are when you want something, most people believe that they will feel differently when they get it. When I get that Rolex watch, then I'll feel like a winner. When I get that car, then I will feel like I've achieved something. 
then I will have confidence in myself when I have that car. When I get this, I will feel better. When I pay off my credit cards, then I will feel more secure. When I get to this level, I'll feel more comfortable. When this happens, I'll feel more excited. So we start thinking, uh, my feelings are going to change when I get something. And I remember in Massachusetts, there was a guy who was worth millions of dollars, and he did a meeting. At the end of the meeting, he was in the back, and a couple guys says, we're going to Denny's up on Route 1. This is in Massachusetts. And I heard that, and I ran out the door, hopped in my car, rushed to Denny's, went in and said, is there a group coming from the Ramada? Yeah, they had just called. Where are they going to be sitting? Go right over here. Good. I'm going to take that table right there, right next to the group. And I sat there. And as you walked in, I go, ah, surprised to see you here. I was at the meeting over at the Ramada. <laughs> so very nice to meet you. I said, really impressed with your talk, and I'm a member of the group, and so forth and so on. And we started chatting with this multimillionaire who was there with a group of his friends. And one of the things he said was, he was adding some advice, and I asked him a couple questions. And he says, you know, the key is, when you walk into a place, you have to walk in like you own it. And when you leave, someday you will. But you have to have that attitude. And I said not meaning anything wrong, but I was on autopilot because of my programming. I said, and when I have your money, I'll have that attitude too. And I didn't mean it in a negative way. It, to me, it was a matter of fact. Like, well, sure, when I have your money, I'll have that attitude too. Like, I'm going to do it, right? I was like motivated. I wasn't saying it in a negative way. I was saying is. I'm with you, and when I get your money, I'm going to have that attitude too. And he looked at me, and he said very sternly, no. The money doesn't give you the attitude. The attitude will give you the money. And then he went off on this long lecture to me about most people think that when you get something, you'll feel differently. No, you have to feel that way first in order for you to get it. So you have to have the feeling first before you actually get what you want. And this is a very important factor and trick. It's hard to do, but success is a habit, just like failure is a habit. Successful people do things by habit, success habit. Question. Yes, is that uh, part of the being before you have, as, as in the formula B, do have? Are you, is, that, is that the focus you're trying to, the point you're trying to drive home there? Is the being part? Yes. When we say be, do, have, have, be, do, there's, there's three words there. The actual correct formula mathematically of this is be, do, then have. That is the progression. The first one is be. Being means you have the attitude, the belief that you're going to achieve it. You've put out the request. It's there. And you are at the right point in time. You feel good now about that request. You know, someday I'm going to have a Porsche. Someday. And I'm not stressed out. I don't have it today. And I'm not stressed out that I have all my credit cards maxed out. And I just lost my job. And my house is in foreclosure. <laughs> I should be stressed out, but I'm not stressed out about that. Because someday, everything's going to be fine, and I'm going to be driving this Porsche. And when you're at that place of, and you know something? I don't know the road and, that I'm going to go down before I get it. But someday, I'm going to get it. When you're at that lovely place, and you know, it could be I go bankrupt. It could be I lose everything. It could be I start over. Who knows? It doesn't really matter. When you're, when you're there was a, a funny movie called The Exotic Marigold Hotel, which I found very amusing. And in this movie, these elderly people with different problems went to India. They saw an ad on the internet for this exotic marigold hotel. 
a luxury resort for retirees. And when they went there, they found out that they were the only guests, and this resort was far from a luxury resort. Nothing worked. It was a complete disaster. A very well-meaning young kid owner uh, is in India, but nothing worked. And he said, in India, we have a marvelous proverb. The proverb is, everything will be fine in the end. And if it's not fine, it's just not the end. (laughs) (laughs) And it's funny, but it's exactly true. The game ain't over yet. I remember watching, I was in Australia, and I'm kind of a baseball fan, a fair-weather Red Sox fan when they're winning. Now, I don't know who they are. But but they were in in the playoffs against the the evil New York Yankees. (laughs) Who I am a fan of this year, by the way, because I am a complete fair-weather fan. God bless Derek Jeter. So I was watching the Yankees and the Red Sox play, and I was in Australia at the time with a friend of mine on holiday, but I was watching the game. And the Red Sox was a seven-game series, and the Red Sox lost the first game. They lost the second game. They lost the third game. They're down three games to zero in the best of seven series. It's over. It's like over. Never before had any team come back from a 0-3 deficit to to win in the playoffs. Just never, never has happened. It's over, but I watch the next game anyway. And it's over. It's the ninth inning. We're down by three runs or something. It's over. And they got Mariano Rivera, the greatest closer pitcher of all time, up. It's over. It's over. Bam, 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 we win the game. Okay. Got lucky. The next game. Same thing. It's in the ninth inning. It's over. Rivera comes in, shuts it down. It's over. We're down. Bam, bam, bam. We win the game. I mean, it was goofy. We won these last three games and four games in a row. The Red Sox went in like extra innings. And it was the stupidest thing you've ever seen. It was ridiculous. It was incredibly exciting. The point was, it wasn't over. And it never is over. This is what people don't understand in life. The game of life never ends. And it isn't a cumulative score. It's sets. So you can lose the first set, six love. You can lose the first set in life, six to zero. Lose everything. Guess what? There's another set tomorrow. And it's a clean start. You can start again. And if you lose this match, well, the long term isn't over yet. There's another tournament. You can still win. And you don't have to win the majority because the purses keep getting bigger. You just win one and all of a sudden it's it's all you need. So the game of life is never over. And this is what people don't grasp. When things go bad, it's just part of the road. So... There's a little detour. Something, you know, screwy happened. You think, what are you learning from this? Believe me, if you, if you take it as an experience, you'll be much better down the road. Every experience, if you have awareness, you can become a much better individual and have much more power because of that experience. So the answer to your question, be, do, and have. So the awareness plays a a key major factor in that. Okay. Awareness is very important. Very few people are truly aware. If I were to ask people, uh, write down your strengths and write down your weaknesses. Now, let's take, take your best friend, and your best friend were to write down your strengths and weaknesses. Do you think they would be exactly the same? Probably not. Now, who's right? Well, You're both right because it's what you perceive and it's what they perceive. Perception is reality. But the point is you're perceiving different things. The ideal sweet spot to be in is that you're perceiving what other people are perceiving as well as you. 
So if you say, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Well, let me tell you what my strengths are and what most people perceive my strengths to be. Let me tell you what my weaknesses are and what most people perceive them to be. And that is true awareness when you understand this is what I'm perceiving, but this is what other people are perceiving. And if other people are perceiving that as a weakness, it is in their mind. So you have to understand all of that in order to to start evaluating yourself to become, go to the next level. That way you know what to work on and what to focus on. Hi. Hi. I want to go back to that delicious cheeseburger. Yes. At the restaurant, you tell the waiter exactly what you want. But in life, how do you tell the universe specifically how do you put your order in? The question is, how do you put your order in specifically to the universe? The basic fundamental question. I want something, how do I place my order? It's as simple as this, and then we expand it. Define your dream or define what you want and get a burning desire for its achievement. It's as simple as saying, this is what I want, and this is why I want it. I want a career, a job with wonderful people, with growth expansion, where I feel fulfilled, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I want a relationship, and this is what I want in the relationship, and this is why I want it. I want money. Here's how much money I want. Here's what I want. I want to have a book published. Whatever you want, and I'm trying to give a a variety of things. It's simply writing down on a piece of paper, white paper, ideally with blue ink, exactly what you want and why you want it. This is what I want. You have to be in a place when you think about it that you don't feel annoyed that you don't have it. That's the place of lack, and you're never going to get it. That means it's either too big or you have to change some of your thinking. So the recipe for putting in an order is as simple as being as specific as you can of what you want, but it could be a specific, general, or with a feeling, or all of the above. Looking at it and now saying, universe, this is what I want. I don't know when it's going to come in. You can't put a timeline on it. That's later. I mean, that's very advanced, putting a timeline on things, because at this stage, putting a timeline on something will almost always put you in a a situation of lack and fear, and you'll never get it. So you can't put a timeline on it. So put specifically what you want. When you think about it, you're excited. But it's coming. You've got to feel good now, even though you don't have it. And you have to not care that you don't have it. That makes it come in better. And it's everything that we talk about in the Success Mastery course, Levels 1, and we, we spend a lot about into Level 2 and Level 3 and Level 4. This is something that takes five minutes to learn and a lifetime to master. And you never master it. You just get better at it. Question. Up there we have dreams as plural, yet the path to them is singular. What if you have more than one dream? Uh, Do you prioritize? Do you spread the chief aim? It's a a very common question, and it's a very good question. The question is, let's let's define this, because we're we're talking about a recipe. And And it's important with recipes in order to get the results. Julia Child wrote a cookbook on French cooking called Mastering the Art of French Cooking, which I cook a lot. Dr. Ted Mortar cooks a lot. We have guys who cook for us. And we love cooking. And we love food. We love eating. Probably love eating more than cooking, but we love both. (laughs) And I followed recipes, and I can tell you, if you you want one cookbook, get Julia Child's cookbook, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. And I'll tell you the reason why. Because if you follow her recipe and just do what she says, you absolutely will get 
stunningly delicious food. And it's not fattening food because you can't eat that much of it. It's just so delicious and cooked properly and it's all real food from scratch that you have a few bites and enjoy every, every morsel and then you're done. You really don't gain weight eating it, okay? Because you can only eat so much. It's delicious. Now, I remember when I first got this cookbook, I was reading the recipe for her famous bouffe bourguignon or beef braised in burgundy wine. In French, bouffe bourguignon. And for those who speak French, I apologize for butchering the language. <laughs> I also got other cookbooks which described beef burgundy or bouffe bourguignon. And I read their instructions. And I read Julia Child's instructions. If you followed any of the other recipes, it, was, it turns out okay. When you follow her recipe, it turns out spectacular. Is her recipe better? Well, maybe, maybe not. But let me tell you what her recipe does. There are two things of 50 cookbooks and 50 beef burgundy recipes I looked at. Hers is the only one that says this. It says brown the beef. And in order to brown the beef, you must pat the beef dry with a paper towel. Otherwise, it won't brown. No one else tells you that. If you follow every other recipe, you take the beef, chop it up, try to brown it, it won't brown. It doesn't brown right. It gets overcooked or something. It just doesn't work. But if you pat the beef cubes dry with a paper towel and then brown it, it comes out perfect. She's the only one who tells you that little, that little trick. Everyone else either A, didn't know it, or B, assumes you do. Right? Next, all the other recipes say the same thing. Chop up the mushrooms and brown them. Well, the problem is, you take the amount of mushrooms that the recipe calls for, and you throw them in the saute pan, and they do not brown. In Julia Child's cookbook, it says, in order to brown the mushrooms, you have to do it in separate batches. Do not crowd the mushrooms. Otherwise, they will steam and will not brown. So when you, listen, when you follow her recipe, you then, instead of putting all the mushrooms in one pan at the same time, you put them in you know, three different batches. You don't crowd the mushrooms. They brown beautifully. And when you put that into the bourguignon sauce, it's like fantastic. But you wouldn't know that. So the point is, there is a recipe here. And if you follow the recipe, it works. And the questions you're asking are excellent. This is why Mastering the Success Mastery courses are so valuable. Not just this one, but going forward in the future. Because as you learn this you can be a person that someone else may have a question. And then because you maybe sat in this workshop or went through another one, you can now say, you know, I heard this at a, at a workshop as, as, as helpful advice. So this is a question that comes up a lot. And the question is, should my dream be one thing or lots of things? The answer is, it can be one thing or lots of things. <laughs> but generally, let me give you the best way to, to consider a dream. A dream is really your life 25 years from now or your legacy. If you think about a dream, the dream is for what is your life going to be like 25 years from now? And when you're gone, what is your legacy going to be like? That's why dreams or a dream is so big it would take three lifetimes or two lifetimes to accomplish. So if I were to say, what is your life going to be like 20 or 25 years from now? Think about all the things you want. You don't have to even believe you'll get them. But if money wasn't an object and you could put down anything, what would you put? 
well, I'm in perfect health. You know, I can still climb mountains. I'm very flexible. I have uh, a lake house. I have a, a boat in the lake house. I, I have all my bills paid. I have a landscaper and my yard is perfect. I live in the same home, but it's perfect. It's completely refurbished. All new appliances. I got a maid that comes in twice a week. I got uh, money put away in trust for my kids. Whatever, right? And I'm happy, and we have all these uh, events at the house with all the family. We have these wonderful, you know, family get-togethers where we play badminton, and we actually have a badminton net. <laughs> <clears throat> and and we have more than one birdie, you know, instead of the one birdie going over the fence with the mad dog, and then we always have to draw straws of who's going to jump the fence to get the birdie before they get attacked by the the, the neighbor's mad dog. <laughs> And you start putting together a dream. And that dream is a lot of things. The dream is not a picture. At nighttime, when you dream, do you dream in snapshots? Or is it a movie? It's a running movie. The dream, the dream, your dreams, is a movie. And that movie can change from today, tomorrow. It can morph, modify, adjust. Play with it. It's your dream. The dream or your dreams are your future of how you would like it to be. Use your imagination. Don't restrict yourself. It doesn't matter if you don't hit them all. Or it doesn't matter if you don't hit any of them. Because guess what? You'll be close. Shoot for the moon, because even if you miss, you'll still wind up amongst the stars. The size of your dream is really important. Next, your chief aim. Your chief aim can be, well, I have a chief aim for health. Maybe you, you have a chief aim of a certain goal weight. You have a chief aim for finances. You have a chief aim for your relationship status. So you have maybe three different chief aims. That's fine. In the beginning, which is the priority? So ideally, focus on one priority. In the beginning, it's easier to focus on one thing. And I'm going to give you an example of this. Do you ever see on TV or in the circus the plate spinners? You know, the plate spinner has a, like a bamboo, little bamboo rod, and he has a plate. And he takes that plate and he puts it on the rod and he spins it. So he's holding the rod and the plate's spinning on top of that little rod. And that's pretty easy to do if you know how to do plate spinning. <laughs> Try one. It ain't that easy. So here's the point. You're just learning this, correct? So you have to learn how to get one plate spinning on the rod. You're not there yet. So should you then say, okay, I'm going to get three plates and three rods and get them all going at the same time? Not yet. Maybe down the road. Let's get one plate spinning first. Let's get really good at one plate before you add two. And then let's get really good there before you go to three. So in terms of chief aim, initially, you want to make all these things happen in your life. Baby steps. Make one thing happen. Make one thing. The guy comes to me and says, I want to talk about the million dollars I'm going to be earning each year and what I'm going to do with the money. I said, let me ask you a personal, private question. In confidence, what did you earn last year? 55,000. I said, I'll tell you what, let's focus on 100,000, not a million. Let's get to 100 first. Well, I really believe I can hit a million. Let me ask you a question. Last year, you made 50. Yeah, around there. Would you make the year before? 50. Would you make the year before that? 40. Would you make the year before that? 40. Would you make, did you ever hit over 50? No. How long have you been in the workforce? Over 10 years. Yeah. 
Let's focus on 100. You with me? In other words, let, let's get, let, let's, let's hit, let, when we get, go as far as you can see, when you get there, you'll see further. This make sense? Good. We're going to have to break. It's 12 o'clock. I know time's, it's like, wow, just like, just like that. This afternoon at 2 o'clock, we have level 2 and above. Obviously, the number of people continues to decrease, which means I'll obviously be able to spend more time with each one of you this, a little more this afternoon than tomorrow, level 3 and level 4. The Success Mastery course is the foundation of the club. The books, another foundation. The functions, another foundation. We have family reunion coming up. There's an early bird special if you enroll by the end of August, if we still have seats available. I'd strongly consider you going if you haven't been to a major function. Functions are special. If you, if you haven't been to a major function, ask somebody here who has... How many people here have been to a major function? Can I see a show of hands? Okay. So if you haven't, you see the hands raising, ask some of the people that have been and says, what is it like? Is it really worth the time and money to go? And they'll, and they'll share with you some of that information. But I think it's very, very valuable for sure. So I would just encourage you, this is a journey. It's not a destination. And I would encourage one thing. When it comes to learning the Success Mastery course, it's serious. But don't take it too serious. Care, but not that much. Have fun with it because life, as Ed Foreman says, is for laughing, loving, and living. Love you. I'll see you this afternoon at 2 o'clock.